Uh, hello, this is a Reason 5 uh, Record 1.5. This is a tutorial on pads, as was requested. Um, for If you're doing trance tracks, pads are very important for your breakdown. They're not completely necessary, but it really does give your track a nice full sound. And, you know, you can take, for instance, I have here a, my remix of Cuff Dam's song, We Gotta Go Again and I completely revamped the breakdown and added my own custom pads in there to give it a big thick sound. I'll let you listen to that real quick. So as you can tell there, there's, uh, there's lots of layering going on and uh, that's really, I think, the key to pads. If you want a big, thick pad, you gotta really, you know, layer a bunch of sounds and really create something dynamic. So it's in interesting to listen to. So to start off, as always, uh, right-click and create a combinator. Right-click inside of the combinator, create a line mixer 6-2, and then right-click again and create an instance of Thor. I ha I have mine initialized. So we start out with just this basic sound. So, uh, to begin with, you want to get that pad shape, that sort of ease in, uh, so give it a little bit of a higher attack, and really how much, you know, uh, high of attack is really up to your preference, what you're using it for. I'm going to put mine at about 425 milliseconds, somewhere in there. I usually put the sustain all the way up and then put some release in there, about the same as the attack. So you have a very, very, very basic pad there, but that sounds awful. So really, you gotta, you gotta, um, I usually never use the basic analyze oscillator, analog os oscillator for that. I usually use multi oscillators and I usually layer them. So, um, we'll keep this on Sawtooth. So I'm going to put this on interval and the detune amount to about 38. And I'm going to create another multi-oscillator and this time I'm going to do a pulse wave. And I'm going to put that up to 38 as well. Bring this to interval as well. So, already it's sounding a little bit better, but it still sounds very cheesy. Um, I do want to use one analog oscillator, but usually what I do with this is I put a sine wave down and I drop that down an octave, so you have a nice dramatic low end. Maybe drop it down a couple octaves. now I realize that sounds really muddy, but we'll fix that up later. So I'm going to bring this frequency up. Resonance up as well, just a little bit. And I think I'm going to bring this decay all the way up as well. That way it has a more consistent, you know, sound. It doesn't, you know, with the decay down it sounds more like you can hear the attack building up, but if you put the decay all the way up it's gives it, I think, a little more, uh, you know, a bit more of a consistent sound. It just, it, the sound starts up faster, you know, you don't have the, uh, you don't have it sweeping in. And I'm going to put a state variable filter in this one, do it about the same as the other one. This is mostly just personal preference here. And now I'm going to right click this, hold in shift and duplicate devices and tracks, pan this about halfway to the left, this one about halfway to the right. Now we have a nice big wide sound. And now I want to equalize this, clean it up. 
So I'm going to right click on the uh, on the line mixer, select M class equalizer and hold shift when I create it. That way none of the uh, cables attach themselves automatically. Oops. And I'm going to pull out these cables, put them through this input. And I do this on personal preference. I don't like it going through the auxiliary because it comes back like twice as loud. So I just like routing it right through and then up into the combinator. So I'm going to start cleaning up the sound a bit. multiple ones of these because I like to do a lot of uh, personal equalization because I'm really picky about my sound sometimes. <laughs> So far we have a nice big thick sound going on, and I'm going to pull a little more of that low end out because there's just a little too much in there for my taste. <laughs> So I think that sounds good. You can you have the whole mid to uh, high end going on, and then you have that low dramatic, uh, that low end giving it that just dramatic feel. You can. You can really feel it. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, reverb to this. I'm going to bring my dry wet down to about a quarter of the way here. And let's open this up. I'm gonna, I usually put this on plate. Decay about... HF damp all the way up, high equalization all the way down, and then this LF damp up to about 350 around that area. So already we have nice, you know, big thick sound going. Um, as far as other effects go, you can a lot of the times, uh, you know, throw in stuff like chorus flanger. Or one of my favorites is the phaser, maybe even unison. But one of the biggest things you can do, I think, and the best way to get the most unique sound is these LFOs here, the low frequency oscillators. So let's say, uh, for instance. I want I want the frequency on the slow pass ladder filter to you know sort of pulsate a little bit. I'm gonna uh, activate these two, the key sync and the tempo sync. I want it to go a little bit slower to make it a little more interesting. So I'm gonna put this rate down to four one, and then down here in the router, I'm gonna go to LFO one, the destination filter one frequency knob. And the amount is something you have to experiment with because um, if a low amount, it'll just go a little bit, but a high amount, it'll really go a lot. So, just find an area we like. Maybe I'm going to bring this rate up just a little bit. And you can sort of like hear it pulsing a little bit. And now sometimes like a lot of the, you know, your uh, effects like that, it might not be noticeable. But sometimes the stuff you don't hear right up front will completely make a whole, you know, the whole difference whenever it sits in the mix. Because, you know, sometimes it's the, uh, 
stuff you don't hear directly that really adds the dynamics to the track. So I'm going to copy this patch, paste it onto that one, bring this back. It's, this one's at 40, I'll bring this one back to negative 40. <laughs> So that has a pretty interesting sound. Um, so I want to add a little bit more to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse all these. Right click create and I'm going to hold and shift and hit line mixer 6-2. Bring that up to the top. And this comes out of uh, this RV7000 up into that. I'm just going to bring this over to here. And then this master up and out. And I want a new, uh, you know, new set of instruments. So I'm going to leave all this on its own and I'm going to create another line too. This is personal preference, but I'm just very, uh, I'm very OCD about the way I handle different instrument sets in here. I like to keep it all organized. So what I want to, I, I want something like a string. So I'm going to go to the NNXT dance sampler. Let's find some strings in here. Something that sounds pretty good. I like these redemption ones the best. I'm gonna bring a little more of attack to that. Bring this volume down just a little bit. As usual, I'm going to widen this up a little bit. Let's bring this one t all the way up to 64 on each side. That way, it's a little wider than the initial pad. And I'm going to I'm going to use this as a high end. So I'm going to uh, right click on here, create an M class equalizer, and I'm going to equalize the lower ends off of this. That way, the um, the high ends out on the uh, you know the very edges of the sound. So it sounds better, but it's really quiet. So um, before I loud it up a little bit, I'm just going to put the basic reverb on it. And to loud it up a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit of c compression on it. And I think basically the key to a good compression is whenever you have your sound up, you get one little green bar right there. As long as it holds a little bit consistent there, you get a good sound. I'll put a little bit of uh, input gain on this. And some output. So now let's see what that sounds like with this other one. And bring it 
down a little bit. I, I kind of want to keep this a little subtle in the background. And I think those strings are good. I think I'm going to bring the uh, the attack on that um, first synth. I'm going to bring that up a little more so it's not as sudden. Let's say to about 1.3. So it's sounding pretty dramatic. There's one last thing I want to add to it, and that's a vocal, sort of like a choir type vocal. So one last line mixer six two. We'll bring that up here. Create another NNXT, and let's find a nice choir sort of sample. of that. Okay, I think I think that one sounds the best. Let's bring the attack up a little bit. This one will make this a little less wide, about 18. And let's see what it sounds like in the mix here. Too bad. This thing's sticking out like a sore thumb there. This first synth, I think. Maybe bring that attack up just a little more. because I think this holds out just a little too long. That's pretty good. And finally, we'll clean it up a bit. add a little bit of reverb. Now let's see how that sounds all together.
so you have a nice big thick dramatic sound going on there and the best thing as always to do with any instrument is experiment 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 because that's that's the way you're gonna find all the your uh, you know all your different methods of uh, doing all you know doing programming all these and I uh, as well you can come up with some really neat sounds here's a few I came up uh, with, with whenever I was experimenting more with pads This is one of my favorites. And that's the one I used to track at the beginning of the tutorial. I usually use this as a background noise. That's just an example of using the LFO filters in post-processing such as the scream, chorus, flanger, unison, all that. You can get some really, really neat sounds out of it. quite a few uh, sounds layered around there. It, it makes some really, really unique sounds when you layer. That's one of the best things you can do to get a complete unique sound. So that's just uh, just some tips to get you started. Um, I encourage you to sit down for a while and really, uh, really try to come up with something unique, something of your own, and uh, it really brings out your own style. And uh, it, there's nothing better than you know completely creating something from scratch using your own sounds. Whenever I started working on music to begin with, I always used presets, but you know coming into your own sound is is one of the best things you can do for yourself as a musician. So thank you for watching. If you have any other requests you'd like to see, just uh, leave something in the comments. I'll, I always check them. And thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time.